2305. Officer Tom McClockery is a cop on the beat, patrolling downtown Columbia, South Carolina, working to keep the streets safe. And though these days it's not so unusual to see police on segways, this one is different. It's a hydrogen hybrid. With the Segway and, and with the uh, hydrogen cell, it keeps it nimble going around parking garages, down alleyways, and quietly with, with those that I have to uh, interface with and socially motivate them. In just the last few years, Columbia has transformed itself into a hotbed of hydrogen research thanks in large part to the Industry University Cooperative Research Center for Fuel Cells at the University of South Carolina, funded by the National Science Foundation. What we're focused on, specifically in this center, is how to make a better fuel cell, how to make the fuel cell less expensive, how to make the fuel cell more reliable. Hydrogen is widely hailed as the fuel of the future, plentiful and non-polluting, discharging only water vapor into the environment. Perfecting the fuel cell, which converts hydrogen into a steady stream of electricity, will be one of the keys to making prototype hydrogen vehicles like these commonplace. We're not tied to the barrel of petroleum. The long-term goal of the hydrogen economy and fuel cells in themselves is to be completely renewable. That means developing ways to generate hydrogen using renewable sources like wind and sunlight. Hydrogen fuel cells allow us to store the energy when the sun's not shining and when the wind's not blowing. And it allows us to put that energy, that renewable energy from sun and wind, to work in our transportation sector. A cop on a hybrid Segway is just one example of what a city can do to promote the powerful potential of this technology. Columbia's mayor, Bob Coble, sees hydrogen research at the university as a huge opportunity to create high-quality jobs in the community. While we don't know exactly how it's going to unfold and what technologies will be the uh, primary technology 50 years from now, we know that there's going to be a green economy, a knowledge economy, and we better be part of it uh, or we'll be left behind. To support the push to hydrogen, the City of Columbia, along with the university and local business and industry, are coordinating to put these new hydrogen technologies to work around town. Over at the Carolina Baseball Stadium, the scoreboard is partly run by a hydrogen fuel cell. The City Department of Homeland Security is testing this hydrogen generator that could be used during emergencies to power lights and computers for first responders. And this hydrogen bus will soon be zipping around town. I think it's part of sort of getting it, getting it that there's a new economy out there, there's a green economy out there. We don't have all the answers, but you know if you're not in the game, you're not going to be there at the, in the fourth quarter to, you know, to score the winning touchdown unless you've done the preparation work on the front end. So how far away are we from a hydrogen economy? There's much more research that needs to be done on fuel cells. But we have working fuel cell cars right now. They're expensive, but the price will come down as we produce more of them. How fast that happens, he says, is up to us and boils down to a few big issues. One, a real recognition that CO2 will be a problem for our children and that we want to do something about greenhouse gases. Second, a recognition that sooner or later the price of gasoline is going to be so expensive that we won't have control over it. And we as Americans will now worry about how soon do I fill up my gas tank. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.